All right. Well, lawyers for former President Trump squaring off with Department of Justice attorneys in this federal election interference case yesterday. Trump's legal team arguing that the gag order placed by D.C. Judge Tanya Chutkin violates Trump's constitutional rights. A lawyer with special counsel Jack Smith's office is arguing it is necessary to prevent Trump from intimidating or threatening prosecutors potential witnesses, and court staff. Now, the panel of judges did not immediately issue a decision, but some believe that their questioning points to them leaving the gag order in place and then narrowing the scope. Joining me now is former acting U.S. Attorney General Matt Whitaker. And Matt, good morning to you. Your thoughts on this? The former president has been battling gag orders, not just in New York, but now in this case as well. Yeah, well, this is an interesting case because it really is a chance for all Americans to remember that the First Amendment uh, to our Constitution has, you know, very few limitations. You know, the, the right to speech is almost unfettered unless it, you know, incites uh, a violence, essentially. And so, you know, this panel, if you, if you listen to the arguments, was very... Um, circumspect about really, you know, someone that's running for president being prevented from speaking out uh, and, you know, trying to find where the limits under the law might be. Uh, I think ultimately you're right. I think they will uh, pare back uh, this gag order. I think it's, it, you know, this isn't over yet. I think it's going to be a case that probably makes its way to the Supreme Court and is ultimately uh, a case that is the um, seminal case on free speech. Because, you know, you have the government's interest uh, to, to restrict speech is very limited. And, you know, it, it is uh, purposefully limited. And, and we'll see where the edge of that horizon and that frontier is as this case kind of is uh, judged as it moves forward. You know, my, one of my colleagues at, at Fox News, uh, Greg Jarity, said, you know, this is gag orders are for judges who just want to exert power. Uh, and most of the time uh, they are not even, you know, constitutional. So that seems to be playing out for the former president. I want to move to the other issue uh, of this morning, and that's the White House. So they're demanding now that House Oversight and Judiciary Committees withdraw their subpoenas of several Biden family members. Special counsel to the president, Richard Sauber, is accusing Republicans of misrepresenting facts and ignoring evidence in this new letter. He also claims the impeachment inquiry lacks constitutional legitimacy. Probably, Matt, not a surprise that we're hearing this from the White House. We've also already heard pushback from Hunter Biden's attorneys about this. Uh, but your thoughts on kind of where we are with these subpoenas and, and whether or not they should indeed go forward. Yeah, this seems like a situation where thou doth protest too much. Um, you know, this the, the outrage that they see means that the House is probably on to something here. And these documents that they're requesting really puts the puzzle together. Because if you th remember what we're dealing with here uh, is, you know, multiple, uh, if not 100, limited liability companies. You have all these family members that were receiving distributions from these limited liability companies. And, you know, I mean, obviously, tracking down where all this money went and talking to these witnesses about why they received money is mission critical to figure out, you know, whether or not uh, Joe Biden was selling the office of vice president when he was in that for eight years uh, through his brother Jim and his son Hunter. So uh, I think this is very important investigation and, you know, the American people deserve to know. Yeah, well, you've got this new Gallup poll finding that a majority of Americans, 58 percent, think that the criminal justice system, and this is a, a broad topic here, not tough enough. In 2020, just 41 percent said that the U.S. is not tough enough on crime. We've now seen another awful weekend in Chicago. 24 shot, four deaths. Two of those killed were young boys, Matt. You know, the crime crisis uh, has really exploded really since COVID. Uh, and it's not getting better under this administration. What could be done? Yeah, Cheryl. That's, uh, you know, remember not only Chicago, but here in Washington, D.C., we've had carjacking after carjacking. I think uh, there's three to five every day uh, here in the district. And so, uh, you know, that is a, a nationwide problem. What needs to happen is we need to, you know, reass reassert uh, law enforcement's job. We need to make sure that the political uh, folks in these major cities support the men and women of law enforcement. We need to recruit. Uh, you know, many of these departments are down uh, hundreds of officers. Uh, we need to, you know, invest more money in policing. And the bottom line at the end of the day, uh, you just need a more present and active police force that is actually, uh, you know, 
policing and out in the communities. Uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, these people that are committing these armed crimes, whether it's the shootings, whether it's the carjackings, there's a very limited number of people that are doing that. In fact, uh, you know, by some estimates, there's only like 50 or 100 individuals that are, you know, at the center uh, in most of these cities that are doing these crimes. And so, you know, we need to obviously be tougher on crime and support the men and women of law enforcement. Yeah, we've seen that uh, play out here in New York City. Uh, Matt, Lee Carr is on set with me. He's got a question for you. So, Matt, the, we, we see this polling yeah. that people have been concerned about crime for a long time. In fact, a lot of people thought that 2020 might come down to people's feelings on safety, but it seems like it's just getting worse and worse. Um, <clears throat> do you see any signs that there could be improvement, or do you think this is still going to be in the top three issues when we get to 2024? Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, continue to be a, a important issue, Lee, and that's because you know if you look at, for example, what's happening in Texas, you know you're seeing some of these communities and some of these voters, uh, you know, reassert an, an interest uh, in crime fighting and in politicians, mayors especially, and city councils that are willing to invest and, and not blame the police uh, for what's going on in their communities. But you know, I know. You know, in real America, where I'm from and where I spend a lot of time in places like Des Moines, Iowa, you know, moms are very concerned about their kids' safety and, and growing up in these communities. And there is a, a foreboding and a, and, a, and a concern and a fear uh, that is pervading a lot of communities, especially in urban areas uh, of this criminal threat. And, you know, there is, if you're in Washington, D.C., you have to pay very close attention because of the carjackings that are going on here. And if you have a nice car, you're wondering whether you should even bring it out of the garage right now. If you're a member of Congress, you have to be very careful. It's un unbelievable exactly. that, that we've had so many of our own uh, congressional members attacked. Uh, it's just it's very disturbing what's happening there in Washington where you are. Matt Whitaker, it's always it great is. to have you join us. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Good to see you all. all Thank right. you.